So, if you've never seen Hilda before, it's an animated show following the titular Hilda and her adventures in a land filled with magical creatures and folklore. Along the way, she explores forests and the city of Trollberg, and apart from the stellar writing and great performances, the art style is super cozy and warm. I honestly can't recommend the show enough. When I first started watching Hilda, the very first thing that stood out to me was the extremely pleasing color palettes, and in this video, I want to break a little bit of it down so that you can use it in your own art and projects. By the way, this video will contain zero spoilers for Hilda, so with that being said, let's get into it. Hilda is based on a comic of the same name and created by Luke Pearson who also acts as a co-executive producer on the show. The animations themselves were all handled by Mercury Filmworks based in Canada and developed alongside Silvergate Media. When pitching the show, Luke Pearson and Silvergate Media wished to expand upon the source material while keeping the core intact, intentionally breaking away from feeling too formulaic. The adaptation also takes many of its cues from the comics, with the main color palette mostly consisting of earthy tones, and there's appropriately greens, browns, warm greys, and oranges all littered about. Since the show takes place in a forested area with lots of mountains and nature, this actually makes a lot of sense. However, all of these colors are contrasted by Hilda's iconic blue hair, which is a complementary tone to everything else, as the colors sit directly opposite them on the color wheel. These tones are used consistently throughout the show, with the local color of objects all falling within these specific hues. Local color just refers to the color of an object when it's not under the influence of really strong lighting. If we take a look at the screenshot, you'll notice that all of the blue objects follow the exact same blue used for Hilda, which keeps everything consistent and within the palette. In fact, I actually think that a lot of the color hues in the background are taken from the design of Hilda herself, as we can see that everything kind of fits snugly within them. However, there are a few exceptions later in the show with newer characters, and each new color that deviates from the established palette creates a punch of visual contrast that highlights its importance. A big reason why the limited color palette of Hilda works so well is because it uses lines to convey everything. The lines themselves are playful and help us to distinguish forms from one another. For example, let's take a look at what happens when I erase some of them. In this screenshot, the brown fence and Joanna's hair merge together, and the same thing happens with Twig's white fur and the snow. Without the lines, this wouldn't work without introducing more shading and gradients. But even further than that, the lines themselves are not made equal. A lot of the background elements are drawn with a lighter color, which helps us to push it back in space. And the opposite is true for our characters, who are often drawn with a black line. Through the simple change in color, it does wonders for helping draw the eye towards them in a given scene. However, we can't talk about colors without mentioning light, and I've observed two basic rules that Hilda follows when it comes to lighting. The first is that each object will use a single darker shade that represents its cast or form shadows, which is pretty typical in a lot of animated shows. The reason why this is done is because it would take way too long to paint every single frame if objects had transitions and gradients, and this would also move closer to realism, which you are trying to avoid in a cartoon. In Hilda, forms are suggested clearly with a graphic line. This even extends to the sky, which you can see is broken down by these individual shades of color the closer they get to the horizon. Despite that, the second thing I've observed is the exception to this rule. All of the light bloom in the show is really soft, and you can see it wrapping around and extending to objects. We see this time and time again from natural light sources like the sun, to artificial ones such as fairy lights or TVs, and this technique really helps us feel the brightness emanating from these objects. Now speaking of lighting, what I find the most unique thing about Hilda is how it uses color relativity to create unique palettes depending on the time of day. So during daytime, we'll be seeing a lot of the warm earthy tones I mentioned earlier, but as it shifts towards evening, the entire palette changes towards something more purple and cool by comparison. The color palette is even more restrained here, and the bright blue hair of Hilda starts to become something more akin to a grey purple. Though the cool thing is that it still feels like blue because it's a much more grayed version of the red used for her jacket. Now if I use the same color for our daytime Hilda, just look how out of place it becomes. Finally, when it reaches night, the entire palette is almost monochromatic in its approach. Apart from artificial light sources which are shown through white or yellow or orange, everything else is bathed in a dark purpley blue. In these scenes, Hilda's hair looks dull and blends in with everything else. We can't make out or distinguish colors from one another, and this kind of reminds me of 
Color and Light by James Gurney, and this one particular exercise. On page 138, we have these color swatches here, and then James Gurney has them during the day, and a simulated version of them at nighttime. So notice a lot of these colors lose their perceived saturation and hue, and in Hilda, this is pushed even further by losing them entirely. But the really interesting thing is that at nighttime, Hilda maintains her exact same value structure. And if I switch these images to black and white, you'll see what I mean. I think since her hair is mostly a mid-tone, this gives the environment a chance to either brighten during the day or darken at night, while maintaining the readability of Hilda amongst everything else. You might have heard of the term light and dark or dark and light, and that's exactly what's happening here. These colors are all being intentionally chosen to convey an emotion, and whenever I think of Hilda, I picture the warm, cozy feelings of day and the mostly eerie muted tones at night. So, using what we've learned today, I want to do a really quick demo of a day and night scene and apply the same color logic. And for context, I'm using this picture I took in Perth, and we'll start with a daytime variant. So the first thing I'm doing is just blocking in all of the basic colors that I have. You'll notice on the left hand side of the screen, I've got a, two different color swatches. One of them is Hilda Day and then Hilda Night. And these are basically colors that I've just picked from a bunch of references from the show. So it's interesting because I'm having to interpret and group different local colors together and try and get everything cohesive. Because I only have one other value or color for my shadow, I also have to be really selective in how light or dark everything gets. So you'll also notice that I've started to use a bit of the Hilda blue on those windows just to add that little bit of punch. And then I'm darkening the brick walls in the background and then having the lighter bricks show through just above the doors. Right now I'm just cleaning up a little bit of the line art and I'm also giving them their different colors so I can draw the eye towards the things of most importance. And now just using white, I'm going and adding all the little bits of graffiti on the doors. And going back to what I was saying earlier about the light bloom, I've also decided to add a linear dodge layer and then set that as a gradient over everything just so we have a bit of, a bit of suggestion of sun above. And then finally, I decided to add that little bit of Hilda Green at the bottom just to make the entire color palette tie together a bit more. So now I'm switching over to the nighttime variant of the scene, and this one was actually a pretty interesting challenge just because I decided to ignore my value structure beforehand and kind of paint intuitively and see what would happen. So you'll notice that the fire escape now becomes darker than the bricks, and I thought that this just added a little bit of extra variation just because that blue on the fire escape leans more towards purple and it just draws the eye a little bit more. Um, going for the rest, uh, because we are essentially monochromatic, that means that I have to group even more things together. And so you can see that I'm still trying to have a little bit of the value structure show through with the white wall on the left hand side and then just those bricks coming in. I decided to also add some shadows to suggest maybe a little bit of ambient lighting from the moon and then going ahead and filling in those windows as well. Now the fairy lights were pretty interesting just because anything that is artificially lit at nighttime in Hilda gets a lot more saturation and colors. So for these ones I just went ahead and added this kind of really warm yellow color and then changed the, um, the blending mode over to screen and decided to remove the line art because just you know the lights were going to be shining through them and I didn't want to have anything interrupting that flow. So cleaning things a little bit more and then we have our final scene, which is this. And now if we have a look at both of these scenes side by side, this is what we have. All right, that's gonna bring us to the end of this video and I really hope this one helped you out. So what do you think about Hilda's color palette and having really strong limitations on everything? Let me know in the comments down below or just for any art breakdowns you'd like to see in the future. Until next time, everybody, take care and stay safe.